is Dr. Anima Upadhyay and in the chemistry lecture series under the electrochemical corrosion. Today we will, we will discuss the third and the concluding part of control methods of electrochemical corrosion. In my previous lectures on the control methods of electrochemical corrosion, we have already discussed the selection of materials and the various types of protective coatings, which includes inorganic as well as organic coatings. Under the inorganic coatings, we have discussed the anodic and cathodic metal coatings as well as the surface conversion coatings including anodizing, phosphating and chromating. Under the organic coatings, we have discussed paints and their applications. So today, we will discuss the remaining methods of corrosion control that is cathodic protection, anodic protection and corrosion inhibitors. So let us start with the cathodic protection. So when we discuss about the cathodic protection, we first recall that corrosion is due to the formation of anodic areas on the surfaces of the metals. And these anodic areas dissolve to produce electrons which flows towards the cathode, resulting into the dissolution of the metal at anode. If this flow of electrons is reversed, that means the region which has become the anode, if it is turned into cathode, then the metal can be protected from getting corroded. And this can be achieved by reversing the flow of electrons, by connecting the metal which is anode to some other metal which is anodic to it or by providing electrons from some external source. And therefore, the cathodic protection can be classified into two types, sacrificial anode method where the metal to be protected is connected with the metal anodic to it and impressed voltage method where the metal to be protected is connected to some external DC source. So let us start with the sacrificial anode method where the metal which is to be protected is connected to some other metal which is having a lower reduction potential compared to the metal to be protected. Taking the example of an underground pipeline made up of iron. So if we want to protect this pipeline which is underground and has ideal conditions to get corroded to some metals such as zinc or magnesium which has a lower reduction potential compared to iron, then the pipeline will be protected from getting corroded. And such a metal, such as zinc or magnesium, which sacrifices itself to protect the iron from getting corroded are called sacrificial anodes and such a metal method is called sacrificial anode method. But the limitation of this method is that it demands recurring expenditure because the anodic metals which are connected to the base metals should be changed from time to time before getting completely consumed. The second or the impressed voltage method, here the structure to be protected 
is connected to the negative terminal of the external DC source. And to this, an inert anode like platinum or graphite is also connected, which is buried into the backfill such as gypsum under the earth to increase the electrical content between the anode and the soil. So such a method of protection is called impressed voltage method because here the electrons are provided from the external source which makes the metal to be protected as cathode and prevents the corrosion. So now we can compare the two cathodic protection methods, sacrificial anode and the impressed voltage method. In the sacrificial anode method, the electrons are supplied by connecting the metal to a metal which is anodic to the base metal. Whereas in the impressed voltage method, the metal to be protected is connected to a through a DC source. In the sacrificial anode method, a regular monitor monitoring is important so that the metal before getting consumed completely should be replaced by the fresh metal. In the impressed voltage method, a continuous electric supply is important. A power failure may lead to intense corrosion. The sacrificial anode method protects only small structures and underground pipelines. The impressed voltage method is used for protecting the large structures such as large water tanks, ships, marine structures, oil pipelines, etc. Whereas, sacrificial man anode method is generally employed for protecting underground pipelines, hulls of the ship and the steel rods that are embedded in the RCC. Limitations we have already discussed that in the sacrificial anode method, a recurring expenditure of changing the anode after it gets con completely consumed and in the impressed voltage method, it is a continuous supply of the current which is important to protect the intense corrosion. Next is the anodic protection. The anodic protection is very similar to the anodization which we have already discussed in the surface conversion coatings where the metals to be protected if have a tendency to form a thin layer of oxide on its surface becomes passive to the corrosion atmosphere. Same principle is adopted here. The metals such as titanium, steel and its alloys are protected using anodic protection method. Anodic current develops an oxide layer in the oxidizing atmosphere on the surface of the metals and protects the metal from getting corroded. The limitations of this method is that here only those metals which have a tendency to get oxidized can be protected using anodic protection method. The applications are limited but are important. The containers which are used in the transportation of hazardous chemicals are used in this protective method. But the limitation is that the metals which can become passive due to the formation of oxide layer can only be used for anodic protection. The last is the use of corrosion inhibitors. We all know inhibitors are the materials which slows down or retards the rate of reactions. In this case, it is the retardation of redox reactions which are responsible for corrosion and therefore the name corrosion inhibitors. The corrosion inhibition can be achieved in two ways. First is the formation of a thin layer of oxide or insoluble salt on the surface of the metal. 
The second is the adsorption of some protective substance on the surface of the metal. The corrosion inhibitors can be classified into two types. First is their mode of action and second is based on their structure. So based on the mode of action the corrosion inhibitors are classified into three types anodic inhibitors, cathodic inhibitors and vapor phase inhibitors. The anodic inhibitors are the substances which forms insoluble precipitates of oxide films on the surface of the anodes, thus slowing down the anodic reactions. Alkalis, phosphates, chromates and molybdates are generally employed as anodic inhibitors. Cathodic inhibitors are the substances which forms a protective layer on the cathode surface and prevents the evolution of hydrogen at cathode. Sulfates of magnesium, manganese, nickel and zinc in the neutral or alkaline medium are used for this purpose. The vapor phase inhibitors are the substances that sublime readily and form a protective layer on the surface of the metal. Dicyclohexyl ammonium nitride and cyclohexyl amine carbonate are employed as vapor phase inhibitors. Second is the structure. The inhibitors which are classified based on the structure are inorganic inhibitors and organic inhibitors. Silicates, chromates, borates, they suppress the corrosion by acting as anode in the neutral or alkaline medium and they are called inorganic inhibitors whereas stearate, naphthenate, mercaptans and thiourea they get adsorbed on the surface forming impervious films on the surface and such substances are called organic inhibitors. So now after completing the entire chapter on the electrochemical corrosion, factors affecting the rate of corrosion and the corrosion control, we can conclude that by slowing down the corrosion rate, by adopting various control methods, the lifespan of the metals can be extended by decades. We can also say that by having a knowledge of corrosion and its control, a huge amount of money with little maintenance can be protected. It also saves lives. So learn corrosion and save lives. Thanks.